Hey, what's up? This is Chosen. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And this is going to be a Rage Shadow Legends video diving into the Sylvan Watchers because Plarium has officially announced that the Sylvan Watchers faction is going to be live in game for a faction crypt for us to try and battle through to get three star clears. And it's also going to be increasing the requirement to win Lydia the Death Siren in honor of clearing faction wars. So, going to be very important for us to build a team. Even if you're end game, you're going to need a Sylvan Watchers team to farm up the glyphs and the forge crafting materials and if you're not end game you're going to need to start planning on what your sylvan watcher team is going to be because you're going to need to clear it to get lydia the death siren who is a very very strong champion added to your account so we're going to take a look at the faction in general as it stands right now i'll show you all the champions graded in one little infographic just to help you plan quickly but we'll also go through and talk about the notable champions to think about having on your team both from the legendary perspective and also from the rare and epic perspective. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so I will link down below to the dedicated post that we have on the website with the infographic that I'll be referring to during this video that dives into the different champions and just a quick little text version of what we're going to talk about here in this video. But I'll be a little bit more in depth here and we'll go through and talk about where, what, and why as far as the champions to really look into and be interested in adding to your team for the Sylvan Watchers. And also, if you're a little bit newer to raid, I like to have a wide range of people I'm able to speak to from beginner to end game. So I don't want to just neglect you if you're a little bit more beginner. But you see over on the right side, it's 882 stars to get Lydia the Death Siren as a reward. Now, I've finished it. But if you haven't yet, this is going to go up to like 945 or something. That was So it'll, it'll go from 882 to 900 something because you'll need to get more stars from getting three star clears on the Sylvan Watcher faction crypt that will be added to the rotation and it's also super noteworthy to understand that different factions have different bosses you're going to be going up against so right here in the oryx you see this little icon next to stage 21 where it's got that green icon that means you're going to be fighting the green boss and the green boss abilities you see on stage 14 it's got yellow and then on stage 7 it's got the blue so the different bosses have different mechanics you have to worry about and it's i'm, I'm probably due to do a dedicated breakdown of the faction war bosses again and get and get an article and a post out that uh describing to help you understand the different factions and how they work but it, i say this to indicate that we don't know exactly what boss like is it gonna be the purple boss the red boss the yellow we don't know exactly what stage 21 and the three different bosses that the sylvan crypt is going to have in it so the grades and who is perfectly optimal and stuff could change a little bit once we finally see the faction like on a test server or in game but right now we can do a general breakdown especially with cbc coming up here early in the week in just a couple days as of me recording this we can start kind of planning because we are going to be getting the sylvan crypt uh at some point in july so it's going to come sooner than you think so okay as far as the champions to watch out for and keep an eye on elva is the queen of sylvan wars uh or, or sylvan faction wars because she just has everything she's got the aura that you can slide in as the leader she's got good base stats she's got consistent sustain on the a1 and it's also targeted sustain where you need it the most we've got the aoe cleanse on all allies while also blocking debuffs and increased speed on a three turn cooldown insane general utility ability there and then also as far as three starring content you need to have all of your champions alive and she's got a revive on a three turn cooldown along with a passive that brings more sustain and also targeted veil on the person who needs it the most so elva just covers all bases as far as being a cornerstone of a sylvan watchers faction wars team so she's going to be absolutely godly in that role and it's why her grade is a 98 she's almost got a perfect score on faction wars the next one to watch out for for faction wars is Clyedna. Now she gets a little bit of hate as far as not living up to the bill of being like one of these Acrisia, Crisk, Siffy level void legendaries. But as far as just faction wars is concerned, Clyedna, Clayedna, however you say it, sorry, uh, is a very, very good option with lots of general utility, just like Elva. Also the A1, that's going to place some CC and do some turn meter. The AOE leech and decreased speed is going to be amazing. I mean, imagine if you have elva boosting speed then you have clayton decreasing speed that is a massive swing on the battlefield 
also stacking some heals on that ability while also getting a decent chance of getting revives because of the revive on death mechanic that can help you three star some content and again in faction wars you can run these stages over and over and over and wait until you get good luck on the revive on death so it's actually pretty solid for faction wars and then also a passive uh, of a chance to completely block incoming damage. But uh, yeah, uh, Clay not, not quite on the Elva level, but she would be a very solid cornerstone in a Faction Wars team. But then we also have a decent amount of epics. So remember, you know, those are like the legendaries that stand out. And really, there's other legendaries. I, I you know, I should mention, like, before we move on from the legendaries, King Galkabar is actually a pretty solid tanky type champion with shielding and all of that. So definitely, if you, if you have him, like, I'm lucky enough to have Elva and King Galkabar. So I'll be using both of them in my team, probably. Um, oh, Elva is a decent general utility support as well. So the, the Sylvan, they do have a decent number of legendaries that can help you on your journey if you're lucky enough to have one or two of them on your account but i do also want to talk about like the top five epics to watch out for you've got like a Don, my Ciliac, mist rider dryad naya and also cryodan and ruella can be decent as well and Don has a good score in faction wars because he scales with hp and he's a shielder so it's always nice to have shielders when you're trying to get three star queers so you're not as likely to die and then he's also going to be increasing the duration of all buffs so if you build him to go at the right time in your rotation you can really get a lot of value out of those other supports that you have like elva placing continuous heals and stuff to Don can really increase the value of your other champions within your team and he's also got a very scarce role in placing that taunt and then getting a strength then on himself as well uh with being capable of bringing an aura to the battle so to a don a good epic to think about building as well my Ciliac Orn might not look amazing on the surface, but can be a good option for Faction Wars because you get these super consistent poisons and also being able to place poison sensitivity, which is super rare. This is going to be great in like a boss fight context where you can have this featured as your main like ticking damage and just wait. Remember, you don't you, you have time in Faction Wars. If you're looking for three star clears, you don't have to do it in 45 seconds. You can take 10, 12, 15 minutes and just get your three star clears. So my Ciliac could do that with the poison capabilities that he has right here mist rider was the next one on the list and the cool thing about mist rider and why he slots in to having a role in the sylvan faction crypt is because you are getting self-sustained buffing which is great especially when it grants an extra turn and it lasts for three turns so very cool that he can self buff himself you don't have to worry about bringing a support that enables him and then also going to fill the role of being the aoe defense breaker now it looks like it's bad because it's a four turn cooldown and you've got champions like rares like war maiden that can do it on a three turn cooldown and you're like well four turn isn't quite good enough but we have a lot of extra turn mechanics here with mist rider you have it on every single ability you're going to grant an extra turn if it's placed on all enemies that's going to be pretty common in faction wars where they don't have an insane amount of resistance so you should be able to be pretty consistent on getting extra turns and you also have a chance on the a1 to cycle through extra turns so even though this looks like a four turn cooldown it's really like a 3.2 cooldown so really consistent consistent defense break and a decent option to consider as a damage dealer role in your team because you also get the utility of making everybody else in the team do a lot more damage naya is the only void epic in the sylvan watchers and would be a great option for faction wars honestly we may have naya a little bit low for faction wars now that i think about it because naya is going to be an ally protector and this is very good when you're trying to three star content shields ally protect stuff like that that can help you keep your damage dealer alive help you keep the most squishy champion on the team alive so you can get that three star clear you also get the strengthen and you also have this all on a three turn cooldown so very very handy and for boss fight this is super important right here to have the decreased speed but not only that there's other utility here because it's all enemies it's an aoe decrease speed and what does this mean you can do you can bring something like the stun set and you can run these stages over and over and over again because faction crypt keys are free to retry so you put dryad naya in a stun set and just run the crypt over and over until you get good rng on your stun set procs boom you have speed down and a cc on the a1 so a really really good option for faction wars and i think our grade on her may be a little bit low i could see like what is it right now we've got naya at an 80 one this should probably be like an 87 or 88 because there is a lot of utility you can use with naya on both sustain and getting lucky with stun set ccs and all sorts of different options here with the speed down and everything going on 
And there's a couple more that I want to make sure and mention to you. And one of them is going to be Ruewa. Now, on the surface, Ruewa does not seem like she's going to be very good. But you got the base speed of 112, which is super nice. We have the triple hitter A1 that can also steal turn meters. So very, very handy in a boss fight context or just any sort of suppression you're doing is amazing in Faction Wars. And then look at what we can bring against a single target boss fight. Defense break, weaken, and decrease speed like that's like the three things that you want to bring versus a boss fight so it's the same reason that i've always been talking about how blood feather is a good budget option to consider in the orcs because blood feather is going to have this ability right here where she is going to attack one enemy and place decreased speed while also decreasing turn meter and then she can also do defense break on the a2 and bringing the defense break and the speed down with turn meter suppression is very good to look for in faction wars which means that ruella can kind of slot into a similar role as blood feather in the orcs by having all the different utility that she brings so again not like a siffy god tier level champion but an awesome option if you uh, need an epic that you're able to slot in the roster and one more epic that i want to talk about is cryodan now you have a lot of cc right here you get the triple hitter with freezing on the a1 that's great again you can run stages over and over until you get good procs on these freezes you have a, a, a reliable a2 here three turn cooldown when booked constant aoe freezing and then also the increased speed on all allies with turn meter fill and these cycle on a three three cooldown with a passive to get constant kind of snowballing with turns so again cryodan not the godliest of gods but could definitely bring some utility and help you three stars some faction wars content and then lastly as far as the super budget options here for the three rare champions in the faction i'm realizing that uh we didn't get margrave added on there yet and now margrave i, I mean is all right as a budget option you do have the three times at random with a provoke which is pretty nice and you also have a more budget ally protection option right here so you know may i mean i, I don't think amazing but usable in, in a budget team i think the one to watch out for is probably going to be pathfinder kate as a rare because of this ability right here this is a really good ability for a rare you got, you got a three turn cooldown when booked of increasing the cooldown of a random skill on each target by two turns again if you run stages over and over you know the drill by now i've said it five times but you can do this until you get good rng and, and constantly suppress the cooldowns of waves and get a lot of utility out of pathfinder kate if you had the patience to wait for the good procs while trying to get those clears in faction wars so uh yeah that's my take right now as of looking at the sylvan watchers now it's worth noting that by the time the crypt launches here in july we'll probably get another champion or two added to the roster for sylvan and there's a couple things that we need to get adjusted as a team to update this just a little bit uh, a couple of the grades i want to change get that rare on there uh but should be a decent overarching look as of right now to get you started on the journey of building your sylvan roster and like I said, I will link to that down below where you can pull it up on your end if you would like. And let me know in the comment section if there's anything you agree or disagree with and all that. It's always fun to theory craft different teams as a community and try to figure out the best route to go with building Sylvan. And I will also upload my my team when I clear the faction and I'm farming stage 21 and all that. I will keep you in the loop as to what team and what stats and all that I'm using on my account as well. But remember to subscribe on your way out if you enjoy daily rage to watch this content i will see you soon in the next video appreciate all of you have a good rest of your day peace